Welcome to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your holly berries that go with our holly leaves. Now you can find the holly leaf pattern and the written pattern for this all linked below in the description box. So if you want to follow along with the written pattern over on the blog, you can do. And you can find a link to the video for the holly leaves in the description box too. Now the materials that we're going to need to complete these really cute holly berries is very simply a four millimeter crochet hook, some worsted weight or Aran weight yarn. I'm using this Brava from We Crochet or Knit Picks, which um, is just color red, <laughs> nice and simple. Um, you're also gonna need a very small amount, probably not even this much per berry to stuff into your little berries here, or you can use some scrap yarn as well. Um, and I'm gonna be pairing mine with my holly leaves eventually, so I can create some real festive fare for my home. So let's gather those materials and get started. So to make our berries, we very simply start by making a magic ring or an adjustable ring, depending on where you are, it might be called a different thing. So if you're not used to doing that, I'll do give you a very quick tutorial here. I do have a full tutorial over on my channel on how to complete those, or you can just do a chain four and slip stitch into the first chain to create a ring. I place my yarn between my fifth and fourth fingers and then wrap it around my first two to create a cross at the back of my fingers and then secure it with my fourth. So that creates two parallel lines on my fingers and I'm going to insert my hook under the first and grab that back loop with my hook. As I bring it through, I twist my hook up and round and that creates a twist on the hook. I then grab that other loop that's not part of the crossed, the, the parallel lines and bring that loop through the loop on my hook and that creates an adjustable ring. You can let go, nothing will come undone, I assure you. If it's a bit loose, just keep trying and this will eventually just pull on your working yarn to tighten that loop. I untwist my tail yarn, but I'm gonna make sure that I work over that and then just position my working yarn how I normally hold it. I'm gonna pinch my tail yarn and my magic ring or my adjustable circle between these fingers and then I can work freely into that ring. So if you're working with a chain four, you're gonna make sure you go into the ring that you've created, not into that first stitch as well. So for round one, we're going to um, work six US single crochets into the center of that ring or six UK double crochets. We don't chain one to begin because we're going to work in a spiral so there are no chains between the rounds in this pattern. So we just work that first single crochet by inserting the hook and ping a, pulling a loop up and then complete the stitch and we do that for a total of six times. So that's two, three, four, five and six. Don't worry if your stitches get twisted, just kind of bring them back up the right way so they're all in a line. Obviously double check your stitch count, remembering this one doesn't count. So you've got one, two, three, oh, four, five and six. There's our little knot that we created just there. Now to close our ring, we very simply just pull on our tail yarn. I grasp the crochet and just gently pull slow and steady and making sure that that's nice and tight. So that's basically round one, nice and simple. We need to insert our hook under that first double crochet that we made or single crochet in US terms, which can be a little bit tricky. You need to make sure that you grab both those loops. There we go. And then we're ready to start round two. We're not gonna slip stitch to join because we are working in a spiral. So we're just gonna go straight into round two from here. And for round two, what we're going to do is work two single crochets or two double crochets in UK terms into each stitch around. So we're gonna double that stitch count from six to 12. So once you're here, you simply just bring up your loop and work your first single crochet. And then we're going to work a second single crochet into that same stitch. So you can see it's moved right to the end, but it is actually that stitch there that we're working into. 
So that gives us stitch number one and number two, and they've both been worked into that same stitch. We're going to repeat that around for each stitch. So that's number one and number two done. Three and four go into that next stitch. There's five and six. seven and eight into the next one, nine and ten into the next one and then into that last stitch we're going to work eleven and twelve. So we now have twelve single crochets or twelve double crochets working the whole way along and we're going to go straight into round three, which is nice and simple. We're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. So that's one. Two. Three. Four. I thought that. <laughs> Number five into the next stitch, six, seven, eight. And you can see how my work is curling in. You can just pop it through the other way because so then you've got the right side facing. Number nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So now we've done our 12 single crochets, that is row two done. And already you can see, if you've pushed your work inwards, your tail will be coming out of the inside there, which is what we want really. So for round four, we're going to decrease across each stitch around. So you can do this in the normal decrease if you want to, which would simply be to insert your hook, draw up a loop, insert your hook into the next stitch, draw up another loop and then pull through all three loops. Or you can do the invisible decrease which is what I will be doing today. And we're going to do this six times around because we've got 12 stitches and we're going down to, to six stitches. So to do the invisible decrease you insert the hook into the front loop of the next stitch. So there's our stitch, we've got a front loop and we've got a back loop. We just want to pick up that front loop and then we're going to do the same for the next stitch, just picking up that front loop there, yarning over, bringing our loop back through both those loops, yarn over and pull through two. We're going to repeat that six times. So that was once. So we insert into the front loop of the next stitch. Make sure that you've moved along to the next one. Pull through those two loops. That's number two. So just inserting in through that front loop, front loop only. Pulling through those two loops and then pulling through. That was number three. So front loop only. and five and then finally number six you will notice here that we've moved quite a way round to our next stitch so I kind of squish mine down to pick up that front loop and the same for that next one yarn over bring your loop back through make sure they're the same height and pull through. We still have a hole so there is we're gonna have to do that manually I'm afraid to fill that hole. I'm just gonna slip stitch to the next stitch along which means um, and that will create a nice little knot to secure our project and then we can fasten off with a long-ish tail. But before we do anything else we are going to stuff our berry. So if you have some fibre fill 
The first thing I'm going to do is just to stuff this with the tail yarn. And if you have um, a flat nosed pair of scissors, that works incredibly well, but just keep your now tail yarn out of the way. Especially, if, these are great if you're using something into a smaller hole. If you still want to fill up your berry a little bit more, you can also add in some fibre fill. And again, it's just a case of pushing it through and then pushing it in a little bit more. I like to potentially, you could call it overstuff. I like things to be stuffed firmly. Once all that fibre fill is in there, nice and secure, oops, we're going to get our needle and weave in these last little bit of holes. So once you have your needle, you can just thread your tail onto the needle and we're going to just weave in and out all of these remaining stitches. So I kind of work through, again, through those front loops. And then back and out through another pair of loops. One final time, just for good measure. And then when you pull your last bit through, just going to close that hole up for you. I'm going to create a little knot. I know we're not really supposed to have knots in our crochet, but I like things like this to be really secure. Just make a little knot, making sure it's right at the bottom. And there you have your completed little berry. You can make as many of those as you need. You can make a full garland if you wanted to. Um, and then you can pair them with your little holly leaves as well and just sew them onto anything you fancy. I really hope you've enjoyed this crochet tutorial. If you haven't already, please do hit the subscribe button or the notification bell so that you get made aware every time a brand new crochet pattern or crochet tutorial becomes available on my channel. If you'd like to see the written pattern, don't forget that you can see that down in the description box. And I will see you again soon for another crochet tutorial by Cozy Rosie UK.